We should really rehearse introing the, the episode. <laughs> well, but, you I mean, the same intro every time. Yeah, Just go. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have a fancy song or something that can? We do, them? but I'm yeah. not playing it until after I edit. I put it in later. Yeah, but yeah, really we can um, we can pretend like it's playing right now. Yeah. Just like in, it's probably playing right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a very, very, very special of. I already fucked up. Yeah, I'm nervous. But you're gonna I'm not nervous. keep it in because I'm, it's you. And if yeah. I would have fucked up, you would have kept it in. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Go. Welcome to a very special episode of Our Podcast. We were recording live at Funky Buddha Brewery Boom. What, in what? Oakland Park. I'm your host, Mike. As always, the schmuck over there is Jeff. What's up? With his Hawaiian shirt on. <laughs> it's a summer It's a summer true, South Florida yeah, tour. Yeah, true I'm Hollywood my, style. I'm in my Hawaiian shirt, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit of a Hawaiian shirt aficionado. Yours is, is dope. It's Got stellar. It's I appreciate stellar. it. It's yeah. a good Hawaiian. He actually has his sunglasses off this episode. Okay, whatever. We're inside. Whatever. We're inside. Next, uh, next to Jeff here, we have Darren, a.k.a. The House. How's it going, guys? He's been on every single episode at one, one point in time. <laughs> Minutes at a time. Yeah. We are joined by David. Hello there. Leaning guys. in from my birthday episode. And our very, very special guest. The man of the hour. Oh, my God. From Funky Buddha himself. He, are you the Funky Buddha? No, I'm not the Funky Buddha. But I am a are Funky, you funky? Buddha. I'm funky. Yes. Everybody, that's John. What's up, How guys? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> we don't rehearse anything. We just kind of make it up. So, we're here recording live. I'm like I'm Funky over. Buddha here in Oakland Park. We got John here. Now, John, what is it that you do here at the Funky Buddha? Well, um, I am our brand director, so I handle our sales and marketing. Um, I've been here uh, since day one, so kind of seen the brewery grow from, you know, not tiny per se, but, you know, a, a, a small local brewery to now statewide, you know, distributing craft beer throughout Florida, 130 employees. So wow. yeah. it's uh, it's come a long way in just th- in Absolutely. just three short years. Yeah. Would you consider Funky Buddha obscure? <laughs> obscure. It's an inside uh, joke. <laughs> I would. You don't say, have to answer that. Yeah. I don't know how to answer it because like obscure is good. OK. No. But. It's an inside <laughs> joke with the show. We'll, we'll get into that after we after we stop recording. I thought but. maybe you saw this video we produced like a, a couple of weeks ago for our anniversary. We we had a little joke about an obscure brewery making like clam barrel aged <laughs> Berliner Weiss or something. But that, all that sounds good though. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I would drink it. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, were joking, but like it was sure. totally true. <laughs> I would I'm, have I'm one. totally into it. I was actually uh, surprised. So we we did take the tour. Uh, we went through and. I knew you guys were, were big in getting barrels out, but I didn't realize how big the facility actually is back there. And, and I know you have plans to expand as well in the future, but um, and you're piped to do so already, which is pretty amazing. But um, I mean, you guys, you, this is a lot bigger operation than I actually anticipated. It's, it's a big it's, brewery, yeah. Yeah, it's you guys a big are brewery. killing it. Yeah, we're you know we're we're still obviously what you would consider a regional craft brewery. I mean, we make um, you know a certain amount of beer under sixty thousand barrels a year, but over right. fifteen. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we started out with the kind of the space that you're in now. This is our tap room. Obviously, it's 3,000 square feet. We've added on to it. We've got a, a kitchen now that we do uh, custom food, everything from scratch um, daily. And then we've also got a private uh, room in the back. But Which the, is awesome, by yeah, the way. Yeah, the venue space is unbelievable. Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, it, start, you know, it started out with just pretty much the tap room and then the, and then the main part of the brewery that you guys first walked through, which is what we call our cellar. Um, so it was about about eighteen nineteen thousand square feet, and uh, now we've got fifty four thousand square feet. So we've got a bottling line, we've got a lot of refrigeration, dry storage. We've uh, got some areas of the of the brewery that are undeveloped that we're you know hoping to do something with in the future too. So you know it's it's just constantly in flux and changing and and uh, and getting bigger and yeah. and and different. So so you say you, you've been with Funky Buddha since day one. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about you know. It, how Funky Blue got started and kind of that the early stages of it kind of growing to what it is now. Sure. So, I mean, the the short history of Funky Buddha is we started as a uh, craft beer bar in 2007 in Boca Raton. Little little tiny place uh, on Federal Highway, um, way smaller than this tap room here. Um, And just doing craft beer and hookahs and loose leaf teas and uh, doing like open mic and comedy. And the craft beer part of it is what really kind of started attracting people because it was a time in South Florida where 
2007, it was it was tough to get Dogfish Head. It was tough to get Magic Hat, you know, but we, we had right, that. Yeah. And um, so our owner, Ryan, um, you know, he did that for a few years and then quickly outgrew the space and thought I can, I have an opportunity to get in a bigger space in the same plaza. Um, and his brother, Casey, kind of pushed him into it and said, hey, you know what? You, you'll fill it. Don't worry. Uh, you're doing well. This crap beer thing is growing. And uh, so Ryan had been a homebrew since college. He actually went to school at UCF. Go Knights. Go Knights. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, I'll, tr I'll try brewing there. And so September 2010, that's when he launched the Funky Buddha Lounge and Brewery in Boca Raton. He, he opened a, a couple months prior in the space and then started brewing up. And uh, that's when the first beers came out. And they were all, you know, really culinary in nature at a time when down here, you know, we had, we had some brew pubs, you know, we had like. Bruzy, which has been down here forever, and Big Bear, and um, but not a lot of people doing things with like natural ingredients and doing what nowadays we kind of call treatments, right? You know, yeah. or culinary right. inspired beers. And so he was doing that right from the get go, and uh, people took notice, and it just kind of grew from there. So um, that explains a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you guys came in at, 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 I mean, it almost sounds like it was almost accidental, but you came at it in like the perfect time for Florida craft beer. Yes. And you and you hit it when it was on the upswing. You hit it when there was not a ton of competition, and you hit it with the right mentality with, with that culinary inspired, like what what you call treatments now. But that, I mean, the, the stuff that we're drinking today, it's all, it, it's an incredible beer, and you hit it before that was even a thing and that's why i mean i'm sure we're sitting and that's why we're sitting in a giant tap room down here in <laughs> oakland park and yeah well and we, you guys are doing incredibly well we we definitely were the benefit had the benefit of, of good timing i would say and um you know for, from 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 getting to the lounge to the brewery you know it, it didn't it didn't happen overnight but that success did translate and um casey again said to ryan hey let's get into a bigger spot you know this is this is this is great, but we're making thirty gallons of beer at a time, and people were getting excited about maple bacon. They were getting excited about no crust stuff that we were doing at the lounge originally, and uh, but they had no way to get it, and so that's when they decided let's build a brewery. So and Casey is like a hero. We wouldn't have any of this beer without him. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're they're a great compliment to each other. Casey and Ryan are uh, the two owners here, and uh, Casey is uh, kind of more the business side. He's um, a little bit more uh, you know uh, disciplined in terms of. Um, you know, uh, uh, business plans and, and, and whatnot. And Ryan's just the creative genius. You know, he's the guy that decides, you know, he came up with maple bacon coffee border. He's came up with no crust. All these beers that have made us, you know, popular over the years and made people kind of turn their heads and think, wow, I can't believe a beer tastes like that. Yeah. That's all Ryan's doing. So yeah, um, we, we opened here in, two, <laughs> yeah, lemon rain. Yeah, yeah. we opened here in 2013 and, um, you know, we, we kind of haven't looked back. I, I can't recall a day. You know, I've done a lot of different things in my in my time. You know, whether it was graphic design or writing, I used to be a writer. And um, you know, I can't recall ever having a job where I never stopped moving, never stopped working, never stopped to breathe. Even oh, like we are always moving forward, and everyone here is just so hardworking. Um, that's definitely the culture of the brewery is is, is hard work. So um, it's paid off. That's that's yeah. you know, that, that's Absolutely. what you see here. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, your beers are are like, I guess pioneered in terms of like abstract creative thinking of like you would never think to put make a beer that's lemon meringue so <laughs> that maple bacon coffee in a beer and it actually turn out like right. it does yeah so i think that's where like funky buddha has this niche of like cr really creative thinking like kind of off the wall like you won't find this anywhere and it's available here in, uh, you know in florida for now well, yeah it's like it's like you just said it's like People are saying, I never could imagine a beer could taste that way. I've had three beers, at least today, where I'm like, I never imagined a beer could taste that way. And then it does. And Hopefully in a good way. And let me, in, a, <laughs> in a fantastic way. And, like, lemon meringue, <laughs> lemon meringue is, like, the perfect example. Like, who's going to make a lemon meringue beer? But it actually tastes exactly like lemon meringue. And then it also has, like, a, a lot of alcohol in it, too. So you're like, <laughs> it, you're like, all right, this is pretty awesome. That vanilla uh, cream ale, the imperial vanilla cream ale, it's phenomenal it, it, it tastes i mean sweet perfect. potato casserole like who would think to make that a beer and that's one <laughs> and of my that's one of my works. favorite beers because yeah. it's it tastes like sweet potato casserole it's yeah. not 
And that's the big thing. When there's, when there's something on a bottle and it doesn't taste like that, it pisses me off more than anything. Yeah. You guys <laughs> you guys have never had that happen with me, where I'm like, blueberry cobbler doesn't taste like blueberry. No, it tastes exactly like blueberry cobbler. Yeah. Like, it's, it's perfect. It, it, it's exactly what's advertised, and that's what's amazing, is that you can make these off-the-wall beers, and then they taste exactly like what you expect them to taste yeah. like. And, and that's what we go for, like, to a T. You know, like, we... Ryan is very inspired by, you know, dishes from his childhood or thinking he's very food driven. So things that he had or tasted, I thought I remember that memory, you know, food memory is such a powerful memory. We all think about things. And, you know, one of the things that you can think distinctly is what where was I when I tasted this? You know, what did I feel when I tasted this? Absolutely. And food, food does that, you know, so that was a big inspiration for him, I think, to make these beers. And you can't get that if you don't execute that flavor. You, you know, you if you don't make it taste like what you're aiming for you can't get that memory and yeah. so that that is definitely a big part and you know it's it's certainly not everyone's strategy but it's ours and and we want you to to when you taste uh, uh, you know a, a more more uh, taste so much citrus so so much blood orange uh, or a, a sweet potato casserole yeah. feel like you're tasting you know your grandma's sweet potato casserole Absolutely, on Thanksgiving yeah. dinner you know yeah. that's our goal yeah. so you nailed that you nailed that on yeah. all on both of those what do you guys say Dave well I was gonna say they definitely nailed it. I've been counting down the days for blueberry cobbler and sweet potato casserole to come back. I've been waiting for it. It's like I can't wait till September for sweet potato casserole to be back. And that says something about like your beers of people counting down the days to beer X being released, beer Y being released. Maybe we'll make a coffee for a day. The lines for to get last snow. Yeah. Like you don't get that often. No, we feel pretty fortunate. I mean, you know, to be honest, uh, I mean, we we try to make great beer. Um, we try to do our best to, 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 to brand it in the right way and let people know and sell it in the right way that they know what we're trying to convey. And then to have this response and have these kind of fans is pretty it's pretty awe inspiring. It, 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 it validates what we do, what we do and the hard work that we put in, because like I said, we do work really hard. I think everyone here is, you know, from from the bottom, from from our from from our janitor seller guys you know everybody on up you know is very passionate about the beer and what we Absolutely. do and yeah. so it's so before we get into tasting some of your beers any kind of future plans for funky buddha anything yeah so you guys just had your three-year anniversary we so did it was last weekend thank you uh it was it was a monumental task all the events that we do take us months to put on you know whether it's Jeff the anniversary well. event or the maple <laughs> bacon events that we do every january um this one, it got a little rained out, but, you know, we're the benefit uh, of that today, the beneficiaries of that today, because we we're, we're, have all these leftovers from the anniversary. This, these guys right here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, yeah, oh, no, it sucks that oh it rained no. out, and now we get all these great <laughs> got beers love on below top. and yeah. vanilla Which, cream. Love and Below, I'm just going to go ahead and say it right now. This is the best, at least in, to my recent memory, the best Funky Buddha beer I've ever had. Thank you. I'm currently That's drinking Love Below. Lo love Below. Love Below. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's... It's just unreal how good this beer is. So, and so Love Below we did uh, for a Valentine's Day. And we're, we're all the beers we do, you know, we always have a lot of pop culture references. We're kind of geeks. We love music and video games and movies. And so Love Below is a reference to uh, that great Outcast album, you know, Speaker Box slash Love Below, the double record. And uh, so we were like, let's do, a, let's do a Valentine's beer where we take the concept of that record, right? You've got... Uh, you know this kind of speaker box being like this like real hip-hop like real like raw album and then love below being like this smooth like you know kind of like uh, jazz and, and, and influenced album with um, with Andre 3000 so we're like let's do bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout Cabernet barrel Imperial Stout and blend them and then add chocolate and cherries and blend them and then come up with a, and it it's, it just drives together yeah. it's so un <laughs> because it's it's Kind of when you describe it that way, it, it is exa exactly that in a beer. It's like, it's like this potent imperial stout like hits you with like the, the booze and everything. But then it's like super sweet and real cherry and chocolatey. And I mean, I I tried it and it, that barrel comes through too. And I I was like, this might be the best beer I've I've had from Funky Buddha. And and I love Funky Buddha. We've said on the show multiple times that we think you guys are incredible. Oh, thanks, um, man. And and this beer is is top notch and. I asked uh, actually three of your bartenders today what their favorite beer on tap is, and all three of them said they Love Below. Said Love and Below. I was like, <laughs> I was right. like, all right, you know what? I don't want to drink 10% before the show or 12% or whatever, but I'm like, I'm gonna drink it just because everybody keeps telling me to. Yeah. And it, they did not let me down. It's amazing. Awesome. Well, you guys saw a lot of those barrels in back, and so we're gonna be making Love Below again 
uh, next year. So it'll be out again in February. It'll be our February Valentine's Barrel Age release. So you're year. sending that to Orlando, right? Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> well, you know, we we have a lot of these beers at Lubelo this year was a brewery only release. Uh, we did get a couple of kegs out into the market, um, but you know. There was only so much we made, and you guys probably saw how many barrels are back there now. We've got a, bit. a big barrel aging program, and, and definitely this year that's been a focus to grow the barrel aging program to make more of these beers and to get them into distribution too, not just here at the brewery. We want people all across the state to be able to try these beers, you know. Bravo on the Buffalo Trace barrels. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Those I are... couldn't hide my smile <laughs> when I saw that. Oh my I made God. an inappropriate joke at his expense <laughs> because of it. It's okay. So you guys are expanding your barrel system. Yes. So um, that that's definitely something we've done. So the the past year has been huge for us. You know, we've we've been growing leaps and bounds, obviously, but also refining what we do and getting, like I said, more of these beers that people know us for. These beers like, you know, Love Below or Maple Bacon or No Crust or Last Snow. Getting them into distribution, getting them into people's hands all across the state, and not just here in the tap room. And that's been a big focus. So this year we have what's called the Little Buddha Small Batch Series. It's our bomber series of 22-ounce bottles. They also hit draft, and they come out once a month, every month. Um, this month, in fact, on Tuesday, is French Toast Double Brown. And so that Whoa. will be the June God. release. Uh, which it's my is favorite. Uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. Mike, Mike was really upset that we came today and not on Tuesday. Just <laughs> yeah. say that. Well, I'm still upset. I, we, we can we can probably taste it today. You know, All that right. would be pretty pretty cool. John, I think to get talking. a yeah. <laughs> stop talking, John. Are you sure I should stop or just keep going? No, no, He's keep gonna keep have going. to hide his boner. So. <laughs> Please keep going. Yeah, you already, you already so. said it. You already said it. He's going to have to hide his boner in a second. Yeah. Good thing I'm sitting down. The table's <laughs> lifting up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. All right. Uh, but yeah, we're we're doing that this month. Next month is Sticky Treats, which is our Rice Krispie Treat style Blondale. Yeah, rice um, treat the Rice Krispie Treats. So, so this is one thing about your brewery, and just and, and I know you're sitting at the table, so everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, Jeff's pandering to him." But <laughs> <laughs> this is de- you know I don't do that very often. None of us do. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've straight up said to a brewer that you don't like his beer to his face. Right so. next to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love you, Ryan. <laughs> but Cold-blooded. what I love about Funky Buddha is I've gone to a handful of events, a lot of events with Funky Buddha, uh, where they're where they're either highlighted or it's a Funky Buddha event, and. Um, I never know what you're releasing or what's going to be available, and it's always different. So, like, what people think they know about Funky Buddha is only a, scratches the surface of what your capabilities are and what beers you have out. And, like, when I went to Maple Bacon Coffee Porter, like I told you, the beer that blew me away, and I was expecting, like, snowed in with Kona Coffee, barrel-aged, all that. I was like, that's going to be my favorite beer. And then I hate Berliner Weisses, my least favorite beer. My favorite beer at that event was the Lychee Berliner Weiss nice. by you guys. And it was something that I had no idea was even going to be there. And that anybody even had the capability to Sometimes brew. Sometimes we don't know it's going to be. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> we surprise ourselves. Like, it's funny. Every one of these events we do, it's always like, like Ryan is always kind of like trying to come up with more to put into the event. And so, like, even the last week, he's like, oh, I need to make a few more beers. I need to make, you know, like, so, like, we're getting things, like, right at the last minute. We're like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad we have that, you know. But it's a surprise, and it's great. So we, yeah. we, uh, we definitely have that going. But that's, again, why we're trying to do these series and get, and, and get more barrels get, to get these beers out there and get more people to try them. Yeah, you just have, like, infinitely, surprisingly great beers that just come out, and you're like, would have never thought of that being a beer, but (laughs) I'm going to try it, and then it blows you away. The Gimlet is is incredible. The Gimlet's cool, yeah. The Gimlet's really cool. Who thinks of making a Gimlet into a beer? But you guys did, and it came out great. Yeah. So anything else going on before we go on to the the next phase here? Uh, Sure. So, yeah, so this year um, we are looking at expanding the brewery in the next uh, 12 to 15 months, so... Uh, you guys saw the barrel room. That room back there uh, in the back of the brewery is, you know, we got a lot of storage, a lot of barrels, but we have some other storage space we can move all that stuff to, and we're going to be building our second brew house there. So, um, you know, probably a common theme that you hear amongst craft breweries is, like, keeping up with demand, you know, and everybody in, in, in Florida is just getting into craft beer and getting excited by it, and so we're selling so much more than we ever have been. We're, at, we're almost at capacity here in the brewery, oh, wow. and so we yeah. need to – go to that next phase so in the next 12 to 15 months we'll be adding uh, a much larger brew house to be able to make all, about three times as much beer as we make now and then also uh, adding a canning line so that we can add cans and and put 
a lot of our beers in cans in different packages, different occasions, so that people can enjoy us on the beach or the golf course or all the cool things that you can do here in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Cool. three times the beer will hold you over for like six months or so before. <laughs> Once everybody regionally finds out how good you guys are, three, three times as much won't be enough. Yeah. I, I see us getting out of Florida at that point, yeah. too. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to part two of the Funky Buddha visit. We're going to try their year-round beers and go through them and uh, talk about them. So we'll be right back. Awesome. Uh, who's the the guy who started it is uh, uh, Chris Volstad. Yeah, he's, he's ex Marlins player. Marlins player. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I watched him in the World Series '97 team. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> what up? So we have some of Funky Buddha's year rounds. The uh, core brands. Core brands, as as Jeff is so adamantly calling them. Well, that's what they uh, are. Everyone mics on, right? Uh, yeah, okay, cool. dude, you're still dude, my joke. Still on. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm a little. I gotta be careful. Mike's very nervous. So, uh, he doesn't like doing John, shows. Do you want to take road. us through kind of each one here? Absolutely. Um, so our flagship beer, probably the one we make more of, is uh, than anything else is Floridian Hefeweizen. Um, Floridian it got. We, we started brewing it at the lounge actually, so it's been around longer than than any beer uh, that we make now. Um, have have and it's just it's a it's a German style heffy. We ferment it uh, slightly warm, so you get a lot of that um, ester uh, character from. You get the banana, citrus, and clove. It's unfiltered. Uh, we actually all of our bills are beers here are filtered with a centrifuge. So our centrifuge actually can you can dial in exactly how much yeast you want to remain in a beer. Okay. And so Floridian, obviously, we leave it. Isn't yeasty that crazy internal. that you have equipment that does that? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, the I mean, world we live in. And that's right that's there. the amazing thing too. <laughs> I think that you know as breweries grow right um, and get bigger, you know, you are able to get equipment and afford equipment that, you know unilaterally like objectively makes your beer better you know yeah. so as you get better you get better yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i mean every brewery i think deals with a certain amount of the band got big type thing but i think we're making better beer and we're definitely making better quality beer than we've ever made before and here i'm i'm thinking about how they actually wrote the software that does the centrifuge <laughs> well it's comp it's complex man yeah. A lot of equations. Yeah. Is that Linux or Mac? <laughs> <laughs> uh, props to the Floridian name. Yeah, that is <laughs> good like, name. I'm surprised no one took that until you well, guys. Right. Did. So I'm, I, and I heard this, and I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, or if not, somebody will comment and tell me I'm wrong. Pretty it frequent. happens very frequently. <laughs> um, but Floridian was the the fastest growing or fastest selling uh, brand in Florida last year, right? Floridian is. Uh, among well, Funky Buddha, we uh, as a whole are the we're the best-selling new craft brewery in the right. country, according to IRI data last year. Sounds very so, obscure. And Floridian was <laughs> damn right. <laughs> Floridian was a part of that for sure. Um, but uh, I mean, it's definitely our biggest beer. So I would I would wager to say there's probably quite a few Floridian tops out there. But it, yeah. it does well wherever we put it. Well, you know, it, it sells well. Uh, yeah. People keep going back for it, and um, you know we're happy. We're happy it, with it. It's stylistically, it, it's it's perfect. It hits the the uh, hefeweizen style very well. Yes. Banana, the clove is a little bit lighter than the banana, but you get it on the nose, and it, it's it, it hits the style perfectly. Thank you. Um, and it, it's a it's a great hefeweizen, especially when you get American hefeweizens that are overly sweet or a little too filtered or a little this or a little right. that. This one hits style perfectly. So. Yeah, I hate I hate hefes. <laughs> but this is one of two. You I hate could, beer. I love beer, Jeff. Beer's this okay. is one of two hefes I actually genuinely enjoy. Well, thank you. The other one being down south in Miami, but we won't mention them. But <laughs> no. this one's this was it's M M M M MIA makes a great hefe. Yeah, and theirs is, is very full flavored too. It's a little bit more banana. Miami Vice this is, is very really full good. flavored. Yeah, I don't like hefes because of the clove. And this, like Jeff said, is a little bit more banana to where it offsets the clove, to, which for me makes it drinkable. So. Well, yeah, I great. mean, we there really weren't any Hefeweizens also when we when we started too, but it's it's kind of cool now. I mean, it's definitely a style that's proliferated in Florida. And I think because of the reasons you said, it's 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 a good it's it's got flavor, but it's still light, so right. people can drink it and not feel like it's bogging them down, but also like they're drinking Darren, a craft what do you beer. Think? Great summer beer. I mean, for sure. Hence, why we keep it on full time. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I was gonna say, yeah, at UCF Wab, we have it on full time. 
So we have two Hefeweizen taps, and one of them is always Floridian. So. You guys have been an awesome to us ever since we started in Orlando. <laughs> that you know, that's been there, I, I so we appreciate it. Honestly, like, like you said, that and that, the MIA. Yeah, they're two great beers, great Hefe. Yeah, that's yeah. a good Hefe too. I love that one. Um, sure. Our IPA is Hop Gun, and uh, Hop Gun is uh, is kind of an interesting IPA because we definitely went with more of an East Coast style. You know, I think a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of breweries are making West Coast style IPAs, and we love the I love like a really melt your teeth hoppy IPA. Um, Hop Gun is definitely more balanced. It doesn't have that kind of bracing bitterness, but it still has a good aroma. Uh, it's we use a lot of Cascade and Centennial hops in it, so it's got that classic pineapple grapefruit combination, kind of almost like a two hearted. Um, and so yeah, we just we just went for a real balanced beer. I think all of our beers we strive for balance. Uh, above all else, so I like it <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I'm not, but that one, I will agree. It's it's a very balanced IPA. That that is the epitome of an IPA is is the hop gun. Like if you're looking for a standard IPA, it, it just follows it straight. I like it, Jeff. I think it's it, we've talked about it, but I think it's really important for core brands to hit style and be the epitome of style. And whether or not it's something you love or hate, at least you know you're getting what you're looking what you're looking for, um, which we've talked about with many big breweries, like we've talked about with uh, Maduro being a brown, a, a perfect style of a brown ale. I think you guys hit a perfect style of an IPA with Hop Gun. And I make fun of Mike all the time because he has a very discerning palate, <laughs> but I also don't like IPAs, but I, <laughs> IPAs, I drink IPAs regularly. I like every solid beer except for Berliner Weisses. But IPAs are not my favorite. But Hop Gun is a perfect, stylistically perfect IPA. So it makes sense. And like you said, it's East Coast. It's not that insane funk of the West Coast hops and everything they do with it. It's uh, it's balanced. It's approachable. It's a good IPA all around fully. You know, you can drink, you can drink eight of them or you can drink one of them. It's going to be good either way. Yeah, it leaves a good aftertaste that won't eat your teeth. It's right. not that dry cotton mouth yeah. that some of those West Coast IPAs give you where it dries right. out your mouth and it tastes like you just like sniffed your dirty hamper <laughs> and it like that like musty that like musty gross like it's, it's I like a little cat pee in my IPA. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I really like that some cotton mouth, like that. you know. Some you know like how many that. people are looking for that like funk? Yeah. I don't like that funk. That funk can stay at home. Well, IPAs are still <laughs> I mean the biggest <laughs> segment in craft beer like among all things like you guys see it you're at, at the bar i mean ipa is what everyone gravitates to still and and there's a lot of talk in the industry about what's the next ipa and i think that the answer is ipa you know ipa is the next IPA. whether it's northeast style ipas that are cloudy well, yeah, and like yeah. full of like just pounds and pounds of hops per barrel yeah. or west coast style ipas that are super dry and bone bitter or something like this, which is more malty and kind of balanced. I mean, there's so many types and there's so many styles of this beer. It just keeps growing, and everybody IPA. gets into it eventually. You know? IPAs will out, IPAs will outlive IPAs. They're yes. just going to keep changing. <laughs> and it's like, I think right now it's Northeast, but two years ago it was West Coast. Totally and, uh, West Coast. And, oh, yeah. and then, like, last year it was Session. Right. And everybody wanted – I think peace. Sessions taste like soap, so I don't I, – you know, whatever. But – we have a killer session I IPA, but we just don't, we don't. It's always, <laughs> it's always a new style of IPA that replaces IPA yeah. at top of IPA. Right. And that's, and that's right. all it is. Like, So I don't know what's going to be next. Everyone's doing coffee IPAs now. And uh, coffee IPAs in the last month and a half to two months, I've been seeing pop up yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of hope that Northeast like IPA. Like yeah, that Northeast orange, IPA. Right. Stay, yeah, just keep orange, orange, citrus. orange, citrus. Yeah. I think that's that's the future of IPA. Yeah, we talked we were talking about Civil Society during the break. They're just an amazing brewery down yeah. here, just making just ridiculously dank IPAs. They're just pouring hops after hops after hops after hops in their beer. Another out of hops. That's a good <laughs> problem for IPAs. And, and, and that's Aaron. a that's a real problem, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not enough yeah. ingredients to go around. Yeah. We can't. We made our anniversary IPA, which we'll taste later, and uh, that beer was made with Mosaic and Vic Secret two hops that are insanely hard to get your hands on Absolutely. we could never make that year round but it's, we could make incredible. it as a special release you I, know i loved it so it was good darren what do you think of the hop gun hop gun solid i mean like we said great style like ipa base um 
I'm really stoked because I actually really love the Hop Stimulator, new beer that they just started putting <laughs> out. Yeah, and that's why we did Hop Stimulator for those reasons we're talking about now. Yeah. We were out. we were thinking about what do we want to make for we we had two year round brands and that's all we had done. Let's make something, you know, for our third year round that that will be complementary to what we have. And we were at first we're not thinking let's make another IPA, but you know, small this beer started as a beer called Small X, and it's been here in the tap room for probably a year and a half. We first brewed it to bring up to Extreme Beer Fest in Boston, and it was a huge hit up there. And people love small arcs here because, again, it's a it's a balanced double IPA, but it's got a great hop aroma to it. Um, and so we took that beer and we refined it and we turned it into Hop Stimulator, which is uh, basically a lot more hops. We use Amarillo hops, Centennial Cascade, and Citra, which is a super popular hop, too, because it gives you that passion sure. fruit-like sure. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we, we debuted it in April, and it's been doing great for us so far. Just this great double IPA, 9.5%, so it's super strong. But cool. it doesn't taste like it. We're gonna try into that. We're gonna get that after this one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got some hop stem uh, now. I, I kind of jumped the gun. And I, I smelled this next one. I'm, I'm Wait, so we're not gonna go. We just talked about hop stem. Let's go to hop stem. You want to go to the next one? Okay, let's go. We can go to the next one. Jeff, Jeff, you're right. You're right. Let's go to hop. We're gonna jump we this just, one. We just hyped it. I know. All right, you're right. You're right. We'll go to hop stem. Let's totally let's unscripted. Let's, let's go. Right. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff's the boss here. All right, we're going to hop stem now. We're going to blow your palate away right now. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing <laughs> I hope and, not. <laughs> and this is a c big common misconception. We've addressed it a couple of times on the show, but everybody assumes a double IPA automatically means it's going to be this insane, hoppy, like Holy bitter shit. bomb of b bitterness. Yeah. And that's not really the case to me, at least, and to a lot of people. Uh, a double IPA is sweeter, has a much higher malt profile, a sweeter backbone, higher booze. It makes you, it makes you warm inside rather than that bitter aftertaste. So... To me, I love double IPAs, and like I said, I'm not a huge IPA fan, but I can drink double IPAs all day, every day. So, I'm excited for Hop Stimulator. I, I pulled a Jeff and jumped the gun, and I tried it. Fantastic. Thanks, Fantastic. Man. This David, is going to be my first sip of it. David, have you have you tried it? I did. It, it tastes very similar to the Hop Gun, but it has a better aftertaste. And I'm not a fan of IPAs, and it actually tastes really good. So. I re it's not as good as no. I'm, I'm just kidding. No, it's really good. I always get like a like a honey aspect to it. Um, yeah, we do use honey malt, so okay. that honey malt adds that honey kind of sure. sweetness to it. And again, you got to add so many hops into this. You got to balance out the bitterness with a certain amount of malt, and so we go for that. Where this it's got really, that I'm really impressed. It nails exactly what I was just talking yeah. about. Yeah. Hop up front, really big on the nose, right on the sweet right finish. on the palate, but a really sweet honey finish yeah. with that malt backbone and that alcohol, that ABV that warms you up and gives you that round sweetness at the end. Yeah. It's Darren, what do you think of the... Have incre you incredible. A really yeah, good yeah, double IPA. Yeah, we, we, since it debuted in April, we've been bringing it in every so often, popping it on tap. Honestly, I, I love it. I wouldn't peg it for 9%. I forget that every time I try it. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just that multi Until he wakes up, right, the next day. Like, <laughs> the next oh, what day. the hell happened last night? No, honestly, <laughs> that multi sweetness is just what, what brings a lot of... I think it's easier to start somebody out into double IPAs and then work doing it backwards. Like IPAs. Exactly. Yeah, it really is. As long as they're willing to drink 8% or higher. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it, it really is. It, as far as an approachable beer goes, a double IPA is almost more approachable. Well, we've had this yeah. in the tap room, you know, like like when in its previous iteration at Small Axe for a long time. And people really do. Like, new people come in here all the time. They never had craft beer. And they gravitate towards our high alcohol stuff. They're like, what do you got this high alcohol? And then they sit at the bar and drink two, three, four, five. And, like, we have to cut people off all the time. You know, they'll have a couple of these and you're like. I'm guilty of that. It's not like <laughs> the Jeff face. I'm the guilty of that. Half closed eyes like, yeah. Hey, I still do the show with that. Yeah. No one has to know. Yeah. Sure. So this is fantastic. I, I really, I'm very surprised that this tasted as good as it, as it does. Yeah, that, that was with the high alcohol. Uh, that it can either be trend. too much. Yeah, it can be too much. Yeah. No, but that was a trend for a while. It's oh yeah. Like, who can make the who can make the highest alcohol beer? Right. And Fifty percent. Yeah. You know. I mean, like right now, I've got a keg in the back. It's friggin' seventeen point well, two percent. Yeah, and I can't wait for that stout event for that thing to come out. You know. <laughs> but um. Twin bozo. Oh, nice. But um, no, it's it for the, for the people who don't know about what makes beer high ABV, it's. It is a lot of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of the, the natural sugars from the malts. It's a lot of 
you know, it, it's what makes the beer sweet is what makes it high ABV. And that's right. why if you have a beer that's 12% or 10% or 8%, it, it's going to get progressively sweeter. It's also going to get progressively warmer in your body. It's going to, you're going to taste booze, but the breweries that are really good can hide that and they figure out a way to make a, yeah. a 9% or a 10% beer taste like it's 7%. But it's always going to finish with that multi sweetness, and that's what I love about high ABV beers. That's why, you know, double IPAs and Imperial Stouts, Baltic Porters are my favorite styles because they finish sweet with a punch, and they just it doesn't leave anything to to be desired. It's already there. It's on your palate. So, I mean, this this kills it. It's perfect. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. So, we're going back to beer number three. <laughs> Mike has been waiting for this. David, don't get too excited over there. <laughs> He already, he's already drinking it. He's already drinking it? No, no, no. I oh, no? Okay. okay. So, John. Uh, I'm, this is yours, so I'm going to give you the mic. <laughs> Break it down for us. What are we drinking now? So, uh, our next beer is uh, Blueberry Cobbler uh, Wheat Ale. So, oh my God. Blueberry Cobbler is, uh, is our summer seasonal. It just released uh, at the beginning of June, and it'll be out through August 15th. And... Uh, this beer is basically just like it sounds. It's fresh blueberries. Uh, we use real whole blueberries in this beer. Uh, cinnamon, vanilla. We want it to taste like a blueberry pie. Not just a blueberry beer, but a blueberry pie. And it's part of our seasonal lineup, which rotates every three months, and which is why I brought it to the table here, because we always have a seasonal beer out there. Jeff is staring at me with his, like, I love the size. <laughs> well, Mike's just, like, already took a sip and didn't even wait. And <laughs> no, just, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I took one too. I'm guilty. I love that graham cracker, vanilla, blueberry. Everything on the up. nose is incredible. Yeah. And and I'm really happy because you say blueberry cobbler and like you said, it's not meant to be a blueberry beer. There's so many breweries that would put out blueberry cobbler and it would be like a blueberry wheat beer. And they might throw vanilla in or they might throw cinnamon. But like this beer is blueberry cobbler. Like Sweet potato casserole is sweet potato casserole. Yeah. Lemon meringue tastes like lemon meringue pie. Like, yeah. it, like it's to the T. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. you. There's not like this. We're gonna call it something because it's a buzzword, and then it'll have blueberries in it, so people it, it'll pass. There's like the the obligation to make it taste like what you want it to taste like, and that's what I love about Funky Buddha is every beer tastes like what you say it's gonna taste like on the bottle. You can read it. You know it's gonna taste like that. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, it, I, I think it's a result of using real ingredients. You know, we use, like I said, whole real blueberries. We get them in, you know, whole. Put them, put them in a tank, and like literally run the beer through it. You know, so we're <laughs> we're using real ingredients, real cinnamon, real. Vanilla. It's expensive. Uh, some of our beers are on the higher side, and that's because we're using real ingredients. We're using things that cost money. I mean, we make a raspberry beer. Raspberries are ridiculously expensive. You know, they're like six dollars a pound. I saw the raspberry put, sitting back there. Yeah, and we got to put literally to make a batch of like raspberry flirty, and we're putting two thousand pounds of raspberries in a tank. You know, like it's it's a lot of raspberries. Yeah, lot. You know? Well, it's funny we were taking the tour, and there's like this entire shelf of just watermelons back there. And we're like, oh, what they have the a, there's actual watermelons back here. All right, so, you know, like, and. and yeah, I mean, that's the benefit of using real ingredients. And sometimes it's easier to extract it or whatever. And, and you know, we honestly, I, I honestly assume that you guys did extract a lot. I'm guilty because, too. I'm guilty. Because I figured there's no way to get these flavors otherwise. Right. That's Pe literally people, what I thought. People definitely do. Like, I'll get, I, I still answer our Twitter all the time and stuff. I'm, I'm on our Twitter always. And, you know, people will be like, you know, uh, you know, this beer... It's great, but it tasted real extracty, and I'm like, well, you know. And then I'll like take take a picture of the ingredients and put it put if it up on Twitter and be knew. like, you know, yeah. If only you saw the bill for blueberries that crossed <laughs> our desk, you know, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, when um, you spend five grand on blueberries, you let me know. How that is. I, it's, it's actually a compliment, though, I think, because the flavor is so intense that people assume that it must be. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a compliment, it must be yeah. fake, but yeah, it's just sure. a it's a it's a result of using a ridiculous amount of real ingredients and. Not to say we'll never use extracts or whatever, uh, but you know there are good there are good na natural extracts out there, and there are breweries making great beers with extracts. You know? there's, there's good extracts. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so. it, it just doesn't usually hold up when you try to age a beer or anything. But there are definitely beers that day one to day thirty taste amazing with extract. I mean, part of the problem with using real ingredients too is it's difficult to get a beer to taste the same every time you make it. 
uh, because there's just a variance in flavor. Whereas an extract, you measure out. You know, they've got scientific parameters they have to stay within. And you're like, all right, well, I need, you know, three droppers per gallon of this or whatever, and it's going to stay that way. Whereas with, with, with natural ingredients, we always constantly have to taste the beer and go, huh, you know, like, okay, maybe we need to add a little bit more maple this time. Is there a job maybe. for that, just to taste a beer? That's, <laughs> that job is Ryan's. Uh, he's the owner. <laughs> How many pounds of vanilla do you use for that vanilla imperial cream ale? Because um, that thing's amazing. Vanilla, uh, I think we, I don't know the exact ratio, and I probably wouldn't even be allowed to say it, but we use, it's probably not pounds per uh, per barrel. It's probably like ounces per barrel. Okay, so yeah, vanilla goes a long way. It's pretty potent, yeah. and it's and we've, delicious. We've actually, uh, we use a vanilla that's actually pureed now. We used to have a guy with vanilla beans, and he would, uh, he would cut the vanilla beans open and then take the caviar out and do that all day for like three days. And then we found a company that would do it for us. And so they actually take all the caviar, everything else, That's right great. there, ready to go. When I knew Randall. He does it. <laughs> I, I had to see the vanilla yeah. beans. And I, I couldn't yeah. imagine doing that on a brewing scale. Yeah, doing that for a 6,000 gallon batch sucks. Oh, <laughs> it's that, the worst. That, that's, a day long. that's an eight hour <laughs> shift. <laughs> I think the the worst uh, the worst the most labor intensive one is key lime pie Berliner Weiss. We make that because key limes are so small, you have to cut like all the skin off, and oh then the amount God. of flesh we only use the flesh like the fruit inside, and so the amount that you get is just so minimal. The guys back there are just peeling. Key I bet limes. you get it's really like, good at it though after like a, an hour. It's a, You're it's probably a valuable really good. skill. <laughs> probably better so than a professional chef. I don't know what David said, but we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to the last part here. We're going to try some of the uh, specialty beers, some of the things that Funky Buddha does excellent that you can't get all year round. So we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Oh, I, I can't. I, oh, my God. All right. I got to keep it together, Breathe. Jeff. Breathe. Part three. The best part. All right, you keep it together. I'll I'm fall gonna, apart. All right. <laughs> That's how we work. So we have we have two beers here. We have uh, John. Tell us what we have. So we've got uh, first up. We got our three years in brewing anniversary IPA. So last weekend was our anniversary party. Um, you know we've been around for three years. It's been a crazy three years. This is the first time we've done an anniversary oh beer. We God. thought we've got to uh, we got to do something to commemorate it. So we made a uh, IPA with champagne yeast. So it made it super super dry. Right, the champagne yeast just eats like all the sugars. And, uh, and it's, it's about 6%, so it's not crazy strong, but then we just loaded it full of Mosaic and Vic's Secret Hops, which give it like a real tropical, that juicy citrus vibe that's very popular now. And then, uh, and then we added in real mango fruit, and that adds back a little to the sweetness. So the, the beer itself, before we added the mango, was super dry, kind of bitter, like real bitter, but you added that, we added that mango in and it acted as a balance and as that malt. Uh, would normally to balance the beer out. So super hoppy, super citrusy. Mango makes it even more tropical than it is, and uh, it's actually probably one of my favorite beers. This we've shit brewed. is the best, <laughs> second best. Okay, I'm a big fan of bottle descriptions, and I just love the first sentence in this, so I'll read it. <laughs> so the the title is three times as funky for three years. I'm assuming <laughs> we're one year older in parentheses, definitely. And one year wiser, debatably. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's nice. awesome. Nice. But what is uh, what's the big craze with Vic, Vic Secret hops? It's a it's a it's a relative new new it's hop. New hop it's just right? a, yeah, it's 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 just a real juicy lemony hop. Uh, so it kind of adds that kind of real nice citrus element to it, this along beer with the rosé. So fucking good. Every year so good. Is a new hop. What's crazy? You know, so we made a lot of this for the anniversary. Our anniversary last weekend. We expected a lot of people. We had it in the park over here. We got rained out. Uh, it was literally a monsoon out there. For three hours, it didn't stop raining. And we had some crazy party people that stayed and partied with us and hung out. And that was so awesome. Uh, it wasn't the tropical storm, but it felt like it. <laughs> the park, park was underwater, muddy, just a mess. Yeah, it was crazy. That park is unbelievable for you guys. And to have that in your backyard is such a nice it's pretty like, awesome. luxury. It's to pretty have, awesome. Because Maple Bacon went fantastically yeah. over there. and so, I, um, I haven't been to a better run beer event oh thanks man. And, and it was we try we try to it make it we try to make it a real good time for everybody so anyway we got plenty of these bottles left so you can get them here at the brewery uh and we obviously have it here to to, to, to taste on i'm top pretty sure well. all of us are going to take a bottle of this home oh <laughs> got to 
maybe the next one too. I'm hoping. I'll have to say, <laughs> it does not taste like it's an IPA. No, not at all. At all. all. You no. cannot taste it like it's an IPA. It tastes amazing. Yeah. Super floral it's hops it's that kind of, yeah. when you add hops in super high quantities, it almost adds a sweetness, a different kind of sweetness than the malt. But it's, again, like these Northeastern style IPAs, like those beers have so many hops, it's almost like, almost like honeyed, you know? Uh, well, I get that lemony that you were talking about, that lemony, yeah. hop, bitter, kind of like sweet li- sweet but bitter taste. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's. I mean, this IPA is great. We tried it. I think you got it, right? Yeah, I got it earlier. And it, it's fantastic. Awesome. A great double. Awesome. Or is it a double or an IPA? Uh, it's just a single. It's like oh, 6%. Wow. It's, awesome. it's, it's awesome. incredible. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, because it, it doesn't, it tastes like a double almost. It's got that sweet but bitter, yeah. Um, awesome. So the next beer we have here oh is uh, Making Mike... Uh, Squirm. <laughs> Don't look down, guys. Don't look down. Uh, so this is the first time we released this beer. It's French Toast Double Brown Ale. First time in bottles uh, outside of our club members. We did a club member release for this oh. last year. Uh, we brewed it in uh, in 2013 for the first time, or 14 rather, for the first time for Extreme Beer Fest. Uh, lots of maple syrup, cinnamon, double brown ale with lactose, oats, tons of different malts in it. So it's just this rich black brown ale. 10 out of 10, just based on smell. And uh, it's perfect beer. Just about 9%. Uh, the bottle says 8.8. Actually, I think we're, this batch came a little above 9. So <laughs> it's a little stronger than. Uh, you mean 8.8%. Right, 8.8. <laughs> the wink, nose wink, is wink. perfect. Yeah. Dude, oh my God. Oh. The nose smells better than actual French toast smells. Yeah. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I don't even want to drink it. I just want to hold it. I, I told Mike earlier, I go, to me, it's really weird, but I'm, I might be one of the only people. But nose oh, nose and body are God. the two biggest things for me in judging a beer. And then flavor is like third. It's a close third, but like I'll, I'll give a beer a way big boost in, in score based on nose and body. And the nose is perfect on this. Like, perfect. It does have a good smell, man. <laughs> Was I right, Dave? Was I right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that is just straight amazing. There's so much syrup flavor. The flavor is amazing. The smell is amazing. Like, you can't go wrong with this one at all. It's, it's Thanks, man. Yep. You guys are, are making me feel all aw shucks over here. I just want to <laughs> brew a beer just with maple syrup. Have you tried it? <laughs> like, drink it. I yeah, there's like, yet. like it. what are you waiting has, for? Has anyone like I don't know if anyone's done that. There's mead, right? You know, like you can make it out of straight honey. How about just making a straight maple syrup? Oh it, my God. it would be the most expensive freaking. <laughs> Is it? Am I right? That's the best. Oh, that, oh my God. You can make That's it with. How many Jemima, beers have I given a five out of five on Untap two? One. One. It's a, it's a this is the number two. Bro. This is uh, a five out of five. Sweet. That's what I'm saying. Isn't it amazing? This will be the I second beer I've ever given beer. a five to on Untap. This is unbelievable. Thanks, man. Well, it's it's out next week, so it'll be statewide. You guys ah, can get it in Orlando. Four days short. I did <laughs> everywhere. I did give a four point seven five to Love Below today, so oh, that's also sweet. almost a perfect beer. <laughs> yeah. This I mean, is it, incredible. The it, nose it, and the body are perfect. What I love is uh, this beer with food. We've done a lot of pairings with it. The best pairing I think I've ever done with this beer is we did a beer dinner in Miami. It was a pop-up beer dinner. And the guy did a Korean marinated steak with kimchi and like these black, a black bean puree. And that sounds friggin' weird, but it was the best freaking pairing with this beer. Just the sweetness, this, the cinnamon, the kimchi. It was like This awesome. beer is a home run. I thought like, like a, a home run. I thought like a, a food pairing that would be great would be like a bratwurst or like a, a sausage or it so goes like, great with those like things too. Like a little too, bit yeah. peppery. Yeah. yeah. And with that sweet, but like that sounds Yo, this beer is a home run. We've done it with like breakfast. Sandwich. I'm definitely bringing a bottle home to have for Father's Day brunch tomorrow morning for sure. <laughs> you better. You better. <laughs> Treat yourself. It, it definitely would go great with brats or sausage. But to go on to what Mike said, it's a grand slam, not a home run. <laughs> All right, well, it's, it's, I'll gladly stand corrected on that. <laughs> All right, it's is Freddie, that as good as a, Freddie Freeman a field just said for the cycle? Or, uh, it's the cycle. Free throw. It's the cycle. <laughs> <laughs> like each brewery should have like a home run beer, and for me personally, this is Funky Boo's home run beer. Thanks, All right, man. Amongst not many, just amongst not just because John's here, but no. If you took like your top five beers, all five of them could be somebody else's home run beer. So like you have like five beers that are home run beers. At least, you know, and like, 
Like, it almost gets lost at how good some of your beers are because some of your other beers are also that good. <laughs> True. I, I agree with you on that. Right? To me, this is probably top two my favorite beer that I can get in Florida. Raps chocolate peanut butter salad being probably the other one. God, Raps chocolate pe- chocolate but peanut butter salad. Rap makes awesome. Beers. They're great. They're I, unbelievable. I'm a big beers. fan in that yeah. tiny little brew. You're oh talking three thousand square feet. What's there's like three hundred square yeah. feet, yeah. including the brew but house. Yeah. The French toast and Raps chocolate peanut butter are probably my two favorite beers in all of Florida, hands down by Thanks, a mile. Man. Well, which is mile. insane because Raps chocolate peanut butter salad's like a five on Untapped. Like a and, literal five. And, John, I did tell a CEO of a brewery I didn't like his beer to his face. <laughs> so I'm not bullshitting you because you're sitting here. When I get up and leave, what's going to happen, guys? <laughs> uh, well, what's going to happen is we're going to go to Lauderdale, and then we're going to come we're back here tonight, back. and, and we're going to drink more drinking. beer. Yeah. Lauderdale makes dope beers, too, man. You guys are going to have a good time over there. Those guys are awesome. So, we love them. Um, yeah, man, thanks for hanging out in the tap room with us here. and. Uh, you know, oh, no, thank chilling you. on you, Saturday, you, yeah. Dude, you're all, dude, you're yeah, awesome, man. Awesome. Everyone here is super friendly, like really passionate, know their, know their stuff. And this episode wouldn't happen if it wasn't for you allowing us to come here. So. Cheers. Well, no, you're, you're very yeah, welcome. We really thank you guys appreciate for coming. the yeah. opportunity to come yeah. here and, and talk with you, and it's, it's been incredible. Thanks for spreading the word of craft beer in Florida, man. Oh, we need welcome. it, you know. And, like, and we funky need Buddha, to, uh, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so anything, John, you want to you wanna give out to the crowd, our audience, any, any plugs? Uh, well, I would just say, you know, thanks for, for thanks for drinking our beers. You know, it really means a lot to all of us here when we hear feedback like this, that people like what we do. It's, it's like I said, validating. It makes us, you know, we work insanely hard here at the brewery. I can't, I can't stress that enough, as does anyone in the craft beer industry. You don't get in the craft beer industry to get rich or uh, because it just seems glamorous, which, you know, it, it totally is. But... Uh, <laughs> No, you get in it because you love beer and you love making it and sharing that with people. And it starts small and it just grows from there. And um, that's what we love. We love sharing our beer with people. So thank you guys for allowing us an outlet to do that. Thank you awesome, for awesome. Yeah, Thank you, man. I think, you know, you say Funky Beer is hardworking. I think it's also passion. Absolutely. You, know, Absolutely. you got to work hard, but you can't work hard if you're not passionate about what you're doing. No, you can't. So you I want to I want to add that to your description it's, here. it's obvious i mean it's through obvious. the beers it's obvious yeah. how passionate that you guys are about what you do and and we've been saying for months now that we think that funky buddhas you know and, and yes you're here so everybody's gonna again but at least they can resort back to other episodes and see us saying it without you here <laughs> half the episodes but <laughs> but we've said that i i think funky buddha has has surpassed cigar city in a lot of ways in, in quality of beer and, and where you guys are in the florida market and um i mean we talked about it. If you were going to go somewhere in Florida to go to one of the two breweries, where would you go? And we all said South Florida. It's down here to Funky Buddha to come here and try your beers is is a great privilege if you're coming from anywhere else. And it's, Absolutely. Uh, you know, I've said it before, too. I think you guys almost have the mystique of like a Three Floyds where you're like so regional and so where you are. But your beers are so well known. You have, what, three or four top rated porters on untapped yeah uh three or four out of the top six are funky buddha porters are funky buddha porters and it's like that's, yeah mate that's, from south florida you know we're really untapped. well known for our yeah. rich northern <laughs> style right. yeah. warming porters yeah. but that's, and, and it's not just us that's a crazy thing like florida Winwood, water Win, plays into malt winwood you know down in miami Great has porter. a gold medal pops porter you know, it's just crazy to me that like all these people in Florida are drinking porters and making yeah, it's, amazing. It's our hard water, man. And, the Florida water yeah, it plays so. into malts. Yeah. But, I think so. But it's it's insane. I think it's, it's a big it's a big middle finger too to like just like the <laughs> idea that you can only for years everyone's like ah oh, you can just drink lagers in Florida and that's it. It's like no fuck that man. Fuck We're that. gonna drink everything. <laughs> there he goes. Give us it all. We have it all, man. But for but for real on the beach. You got you guys have have a great reputation nationwide. You're one of the best trading beers that there is. Um, I mean, it, it's it, you have this this built this great reputation for only being in Florida and and just keep doing what you're doing because it's it's incredible. We Thanks, we man. appreciate living here, and there's very few breweries that make us appreciate living in Florida, and you guys are definitely one of them, if not the one. Absolutely. So. Well, Absolutely. cheers, guys. Thank you all Thank for you. Yeah. joining cheers. me. So find us on all social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and what's the fourth one? There's a fourth one. YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> you missed, this like, the biggest one. This is why you're here, dog. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest one. 
<laughs> so thanks again, John, for having us. Thank you, guys. Thanks to Funky Buddha for being so so nice and so hospitable. So awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And until next time, we'll see you guys at the bar. <laughs>